back. They actually let me back into the country. So I was in Puerto Vallarta for um, four days or something like that. And I was able to fly back through Denver. It wasn't actually that easy to get back in. The uh, Customs and Border Protection Officer at the uh, airport grilled me for a bit, um, especially seeing as I'd already been here six months. He wanted to know what the heck I'd been up to for that time, why I need to come back in the States, how long I'm going to be in the States. Once I started talking about the boat and all of that kind of stuff, then he wanted to know what was happening with the boat when I wasn't going to be here. All sorts of things like that. But eventually he let me through, stamped my passport, and I am good to go. As you recall, just before I left, I was waiting for the heat exchanger to arrive. And so in this episode, that's what we're going to start tackling, is that heat exchanger and hopefully getting the engine all up and running. So uh, let's get at it. Finally arrived is the last major piece that I need to finish the engine installation. This is the uh, heat exchanger, courtesy of Mr. Koo. They did a custom job on this one, as there was no off-the-shelf unit. So let's see what the heck we got. Open this puppy up. The uh, raw water, the seawater, will flow in through here, go around and back, and then flow out from there. And then the coolant, the engine, the regular normal engine coolant, will flow in through one and out through the other, back around to the engine again. And then conveniently, these end caps actually come off, so for servicing, the one previously they were welded on, so if I... Uh, lost a piece of the impeller, for example, I would have to open these up in order to check to see if any of the pieces were in here. So this one is actually serviceable, which is awesome. Thanks, guys. I had Thomas Marine make me a new alternator bracket. This is the old one, and you can see if I hold that up, that it's gonna be way too short. So the new one matches that same arc and gives me uh, more than enough room that I can tension the belt with that. So at a local auto parts store, I was able to take some of the uh, old preformed parts and uh, was able to match them up with uh, who knows what vehicle that comes from, but um, that's all that matters. I just handed him the old stuff and he found something that was close enough, I mean, same diameter, and then I'm just going to have to trim this end off. Unfortunately, I have not been successful in getting the right length of fan belt, but uh, that shouldn't be too, too hard. Uh, I just have to do a better job of measuring it in the first place. So I'm really, really close to being able to start this engine. Uh, just over the last couple of days, I've been able to uh, rearrange how the water pump was sitting, uh, mostly just to get uh, clearance with the alternator, with the new swing radius it has, with the new bracket. I have the heat exchanger ex uh, installed. I have the transmission cooler installed. I did an oil change on the transmission itself. Uh, I've hooked up all the hoses, everything that goes all around the engine. You can see the new radiator hose going all across from the across from the header tank down through the heat exchanger, back up the flex hose through that pipe and then back again. All of that is ready to go. Unfortunately, I'm waiting for two holes to be drilled into the lever for the throttle and the uh, engine cutoff cable. Unfortunately, the pivot that I have, it's just a little bit too big and the metal that it's made of is from some special hardened steel and I went through two drill, two drill bits trying to get it uh, cut through and got nowhere. Took it to the um, uh, fabricator that I've been uh, working with. He does a lot of metal fabricating. On the drill press, he couldn't go through it, so now it's actually down at a machinist's place. And because it's the long weekend here, there are for July 4th, I probably won't see it till Tuesday or Wednesday. And so I've got about four days now with uh, an engine that's ready to go. I think the only thing I might do uh, next is I'm going to start to fill up the, uh, the water in the coolant tank, as well as I'll probably uh, start getting the fuel filters all primed so that there's uh, fuel in the lines. I might even bleed the engine just to get, you know, that far so that the moment I have those uh, controls in place, I'll be able to fire her up. Certainly looking forward to it. I'm 
I'm gonna see if I can bleed the engine a bit. I already did this once, but I just wanna be extra sure. And there we go. And they're not seeing any bubbles. I had friends over to the boat on July 4th and we had a front row seat for some amazing fireworks. There were five different barges along the bay where they were launching fireworks from. And conveniently, one of them was right in front of us, maybe only a few hundred meters away. It was totally awesome. but there was still certainly more work that I need to get done on the engine. Here I'm bolting on a support arm for the throttle cable. I cobbled it together from a couple of other brackets that were unnecessary. I also put the old fiberglass wrap back on the exhaust pipe. Despite being partially cooled by the header tank, the exhaust is pretty hot at this point. It does cool off more as it gets mixed with the outgoing raw water as well. Few really nice uh, race boats here. I think they're getting ready for Transpac, but I'm not sure. That would be a Trans-Pacific race going from LA to Hawaii. Well, let's hope this works. These are the two pieces in question that um, I was having the last little bit of problems with. Um, this one is the uh, lever that controls the throttle position and this is the one for the fuel cutoff and it's controlled by these cables. Uh, the problem was that at the end of the cables there are these little pivots but the holes that were on these did not fit and I tried drilling them out to get them to fit. I actually first looked to see if I could get new pivots and uh, at marine supply stores there were lots of pivots available but all the diameters of the shafts were all identical and i couldn't find anything online that uh, matched and the holes on these were actually two separate sizes too um, at any rate i uh, couldn't get these drilled out myself i went through two drill bits i went to the fabricator that i've been working with he was unsuccessful he took them to a machinist the machinist was able to do it and he figures the reason they are so strong is that there's these little tiny splines inside there's a, kind of like a gear that connects with the screw that actually uh, exerts the force so i guess they wanted to make sure that these definitely did not wear out because they are very very small little things so but anyways time to get them installed and uh hopefully that's the last piece of the puzzle
Not 100% sure why it didn't start yet, um, but one of the things I'm going to try is on this new fuel injection pump, there's the cutoff here, so this would turn the fuel off when you want to turn the engine off. But there's also this little electrical dongle sitting here. And I assumed that that was for a momentary switch, that if you wanted to turn it off electronically, you would just press a button and you would uh, send some current down there to, to close the solenoid. But I'm thinking now it might actually be the opposite, that it needs electrical power in order to be open. So I've just uh, quickly run a, a wire, just a little 12 volt wire um, to that unit. And then if the engine starts now, then what I'll do is I'll connect that uh, wire and that, that little dongle actually straight to the ignition switch. So whenever I just turn off the ignition, the, uh, the engine would automatically shut off, which would be fab if that was the case. Okay, so now that I've uh, bled the engine several times, checked the fuel from the injectors and all of that, I'm gonna try this again. So now with a running engine, I was itching to go out and actually drive around. So the next calm morning, I unhooked the mooring line and set off for a little burn around the block. Everything had been running really well until the engine suddenly just stalled. Absolutely nothing. At first I couldn't decide if I should drop the anchor, just try to fix it, or maybe just hop in the dinghy and use it to hip tow myself back to the mooring ball. I decided that because it seemed like an electrical issue, I would at least have a quick look first, and because the current was moving pretty slowly and there was very little traffic about, I wasn't about to drift into anything dangerous anytime soon. like a clogged fuel line or something like that, it would kind of, you know, 
stumble and stutter as it was slowly running out of fuel. But this was instant. <sighs> Certainly very happy that the engine, of course, is running. It makes such a difference to uh, what's going to be happening in the next few weeks, of course. Um, now I'll actually be able to go out sailing. The hull has not been cleaned in quite a while, so I needed to wait for that before I can really start practicing. Uh, but what I intend to do is I'm actually going to be going uh, very, very close to here, maybe only a few hundred meters on quiet mornings and practice motoring, like going back and forth, like you saw in the bit of the video there when the engine died uh, that first time out. I'll be doing a lot of that, doing figure eights backwards and all sorts of things just in order to get used to how this boat behaves, how long it takes to slow down and uh, then practice docking, all of those kind of skills, as well, of course, as, as soon as the wind picks up, sailing. I'm even thinking of heading off to uh, Mission Bay just a little bit further north of here just for a short excursion and I might then go further and further afield as I get uh, more and more confident with the boat. But yeah, so happy!